100 days in hardcore Minecraft. You guys already know this, but if I die, the world gets deleted. My three goals are to beat the Ender Dragon, obtain full netherite armor and tools, and then beat the Wither. Shout out to Luke the Notable for this idea. If it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be any of these videos going around right now. And to keep it short and sweet, let's get started. It's day zero and I spawn in a normal forest with a snowy mountain in the distance. Like everyone who starts off a new world in Minecraft, I punched a tree with my bare fist. I then used the wood I collected with my bruised hand and crafted myself a crafting table alongside a wooden pickaxe. Next I gathered three stones with the pickaxe that was now my new best friend and created a stone pickaxe for faster mining. I then ventured off into the woods to find food and shelter. I ended up finding a herd of sheep and a plains biome with a village in it, which was perfect to find on day zero. On my way towards the village, I made sure to grab the sugar cane along the way since I would need it for paper to use for enchanting later on. Once I entered the village, I began to steal their hay bales since they won't be needing them and they are a great source for food. I also decided to scare the hell out of a cat because I felt like it. I ended up stealing this house from this hardworking villager because I liked it and he can't do anything about it. I then proceeded to place my belongings in his home to assert further dominance. I killed a sheep because I don't like them, and I wanted to replace them with cows for food and leather. By my first night, I went and brought the cows I needed along with the dirty sheep. The sheep was not letting my cows in, so I punched a filthy cotton ball and watched it run away. The cows were too thick to even enter after the sheep left, so I had to destroy this little fence post to make even more space. Once they finally entered the fence, I made them bear a child, which I would later down the road end up murdering. Day one officially started and I thought that I should probably get to mining. So I began making a staircase down to Y11 so that I could start strip mining. When my last pickaxe broke, I had to retreat to craft some more, but I soon realized I had no more wood. So I spent some time gathering some wood so I can continue with my mining. I even stopped collecting from trees and started stealing wood from the village since no one was using it. While doing this, I noticed a cave in the bottom left corner of my eye that looked very interesting. So with the wood I collected, I made a few picks and some torches and headed to the cave to mine. It was also pretty dark. I was not prepared for this at all. There was too many mobs for me to handle, so I only collected one piece of iron and left. When I got home, I put my one measly iron to smelt and headed to bed. On day two, I used the one measly iron I smelted to make a shield for somewhat protection. I then headed back into the same cave and started mining for the rest of the day. During my mining trip, I gathered enough iron to make myself some armor. On day three, I went back home and put all my materials away safely. I then decided that it was a bit too stuffy in my new home, so I had to make room. I then got to work on making a wheat farm so I don't run out of food for my cows. All I did was steal a villager's farm that he was not using and added a fence around it. Looked pretty neat, if I do say so myself. On day 4, I began to make the sugarcane farm so that I can get the paper I needed for some enchanting. For the rest of the day, I went and finished the strip mine I started. I think it came out alright for what it is. For the entirety of days 5 through 9, I strip mined. I ended up finding my first diamonds early on. It ended up being a 5 vein. With the other diamonds I found, I left them in the mine so when I got fortune I would come back and mine them out. It was still day 9 when I was done, but here's all the loot I got. Not too bad for a day's work, or 4 days work I guess. For the rest of day 9, I gathered more wood from the villagers houses, since I needed it and they really didn't have a use for it. Day 10, I decided to fence the entire village so that the villagers would be in prison, I mean, safe. And I would officially become a great dictator, I mean leader. I mean leader. Since the fencing of the villagers went long into day 11, for the rest of the day, I collected more wood from the nearby forest. Mmm, so much wood. On days 12 to 14, I realized my sugar cane and cow farm was going to take too long to produce what I needed for the enchantment area. So I decided to venture off and look for wild cows and sugar cane to speed up the process. On my mission, I stumbled upon a pink sheep. thought about killing it, but it was still too young, so I let it be. I also stumbled across a village, which I stole the bells and traded them to the farmer for emeralds, stocks. When I made it home, I started on making my enchantment room. I decided to make it under the house since I had no space up in the top. Luckily, I had enough bookshelves for it to reach level 30 enchants. First item I decided to enchant was a diamond pickaxe because I really wanted fortune to mine the rest of these diamonds I left down in the strip mine. But I ended up with silk touch of course. Day 15 I decided to build a nether portal so that I could mine nether quartz to gain xp faster since I really wanted a fortune pickaxe. While I was mining nether quartz you know I had to get the return to sender achievement before I left. It's only natural. On day 16 I made the diamond pick, enchanted it, and got silk touch again. Great. Since I had now two silk touch picks I decided to make an anvil and combine the two picks to make it at least a little better. I then went back to the nether and started looking for the nether fortress. I know very random. I ended up finding the fortress and a blaze spawner as well. I spawn killed the blazes until I got enough blaze rods to make a decent amount of eyes of ender for the end portal. Better to get them now than later. When I was done I left the nether and headed back home. 
On day 17, I still needed XP for the fortune pick I wanted, so I gathered all the cobblestone I had and began making an XP mob spawner. Never built one of these before. I ended up running out of cobblestone along the way, but I remembered I had cobblestone down in my strip mine. I took all of it so that I can continue with the mob spawner. During the night, I started to torch up the outside area of my house and the village area to try and mob proof it as much as I can. All of days 18 through 19 were spent finishing the mob spawner. On day 20 and 21, my mob spawner was finally done and all I did these two days was use it. This is where I would AFK for a few minutes before going down and slaughtering the poor defenseless mobs. On day 22, I went on a trip to the nether to find soul sand. Why you might ask? Well, the ladders I'm using to go up and down the AFK platform is way too slow. So I decided to make a water elevator which requires soul sand and kelp. It took a while, but I finally found some soul sand, making sure to take some extra so I don't have to come this far out anymore. On days 23 to 25, I went out looking for kelp so I can finally make the water elevator. I found another village on the way and did what I always do, stalks. I eventually found the kelp I was looking for, Finally, can't wait to go home after this. When I arrived home, I realized I had reached level 30. Yes, it took that long, the XP farm was currently super slow, so I enchanted another pick and guess what? It had fortune, finally. I was finally able to mine the diamonds I had saved up, came out to a total of 52, very nice. On day 26, I began the construction of the water elevator. I also enchanted some armor, I'm waiting for all of it to be enchanted to use it. I even planted some kelp because I was gonna need more for the elevator, but I'll soon realize this will be a waste of time. Day 27 starts and I begin to harvest the kelp I so desperately need. Oh wait, I could just bone mill the elevator itself. And that's why it would be useless. I then place a water bucket in this spot because this is where I'll be falling down to get from the AFK platform. Have I mentioned yet that the platform is 140 blocks high? Well, whatever. Look how much faster this is. Day 27 to 28, I begin to use the mob spawner again and it already is a lot faster. The reason it was slow before was because it took a very long time to get up and down this platform with only a ladder. Like, a very long time. Whenever I reached level 30, I enchanted a piece of armor. I did this until I got every piece of armor I needed enchanted. Oh yeah, this happened. Luckily, all the mobs were one hit, so it was pretty easy to fix this problem. But in order for this not to happen again, I needed to place obsidian in the bottom. This obsidian can't be blown up by creepers, so I spent the night of day 28 collecting about a stack of obsidian. Yeah, that should be good. On day 29, I AFK'd one last time before finally enchanting all my diamond armor. I put up an armor stand to place my old iron armor on as a memory piece, or whatever you call it. Check me out, I look good in diamond. Only diamond armor is suitable for a dictator, I mean leader of the village. For the rest of day 29, I entered the nether to collect ender pearls so that I can craft the eyes of ender. On day 30, I needed to use a mob spawner one more time so that I could enchant a bow. I needed it because I'm going to be facing the dragon very soon. When I finally enchanted it, I knew I was ready. Morning of day 31 and off I am to find the end portal to face the dragon. Oh, would you look at that? We're already here. That was quick. This stronghold was huge. I looked everywhere for the portal, but ended up in dead ends. Oh look, there it is. I found it, guys. I placed two more eyes to finish the portal, and okay, let's go. By the way, it's day 32 now. First things first, I need to destroy all the end crystals on the towers. Okay, they're all gone. Now it's time to almost die. Not once, but twice. Also gotta get some Enderman mad. Okay, I think we're fine. Next is to have the dragon get the Enderman mad so they all start attacking her. And then I kill her and win in Minecraft. GG's. Well, that was fun. Just kidding, now that it's over, I think it's time I move into an actual home that I built myself. This spruce forest right next door is perfect for what I have in mind. I spent the entire day chopping down trees. Day 34, it was time for me to move all my junk across my new home. Oh, and also tame a wolf just for me. I'm gonna let you guys name it in the comments. Once I finally moved everything in, it was time to start the foundation of my home. I start day 35 fighting off some pillagers and three creepers. When I finally took care of all of them, I made sure not to kill the one holding the flag. I cannot start a raid right now. I'm honestly too scared. After that, I continued working on my house. I would do a cool time lapse here, but I don't have the replay mod installed and I also never used it. But in the next 100 days video, I'll try and use it, but don't quote me on that. Day 36 to 37, I need stone and cobblestone for my house. Those are the blocks I wanted to use for the walls and other stuff. Since I didn't have any more, I went to my strip mine and started digging. From days 38 to 42, I was finishing my new home. Again, this would be perfect time for a cold time lapse, but this will do for now. Day 43, I pretty much finished my home. I just need some sand for the windows, so I set off for a desert since I also wanted lots of sand for TNT to mine ancient debris. I ended up just mining this little patch of sand since I knew a desert was really far away. So instead of TNT, I killed this iron golem, made his flesh into shears, and started shearing all the sheep I see on my way back home. 
I need wolf for the bed I was gonna use to mine for ancient debris. Forgot to say this at all. On day 44, I was still shearing sheep on my way home. When I finally got home, I smelted my sand and installed my new windows. I spent days 45 to 55 mining for ancient debris in the nether. I used a bed strat, like I said I was, which if you don't know what that is, you just place a bed and make sure you're in a safe distance from it and blow it up. And that's pretty much the bed method. When I ran out of beds, I went back to the overworld, made a sheep pen, then went back and continued mining until I finally got the 8 netherite ingots. Why 8? Well it's just the right amount for armor and tools unless I did the math wrong. Days 55 to 58 were spent enslaving the citizens of my village. I was going to need them for breeding so I can make a trading hall. Once I finished imprisoning them, I went home and started the construction of the underground part of my house. I know I still haven't shown the outside, but it's technically not done yet. Don't worry, I'll make sure to show it soon. I then started placing wheat outside my home so that I can start the process of breeding the villagers. Also, I needed beds. Once I had everything I needed, I placed the beds and sauced them some bread so they could get to- I then went home and continued the construction of the underground. This is what it looks like so far in the near future, not these 100 days, but later on, there's going to be so much in the underground, I like building underground. Next up was the making of my villager trading hall. Day 59 was spent gathering wood so I could continue the creation of my trading hall. Day 60 to 64 were spent gathering more wood so I could finish up the trading hall. I then went to check up on the villagers progress, they didn't make babies so I saw some some more bread, hopefully they get to- after that, I went to the nether to get some shroom lights to place in the trading hall. I think the hall came out pretty nice if I do say so myself. Next, I went back to the villagers again to see if they made babies and sure enough, they made four. They really went in. I then made rails so I could connect it from the breeder to the trading hall to start transporting them. Once I finished the rails, I decided to move the sugarcane farm from next to my old house and moved it near my new one since I'm going to be needing the paper to lock in trades. If you don't know what I mean by locking in trades, it'll be explained soon. Start of day 65, I planted the sugarcane farm in front of my house and with the leftovers I made paper to make bookshelves for the lecterns. I know I needed the papers to lock in trays, but I forgot about the lecterns. It's fine, the sugarcane will grow back. I then began the transporting of the villagers. I'm not going to go into detail of how I did it, just know I lured the villager out with the lectern, then trapped him in the minecart. I then trapped him in his room and destroyed the minecart. I should have used my fist because the sword accidentally hit him. He's a little angry right now, so I'll come back to him later once he's cooled off. <laughs> While I let him cool off, I placed the beds in each room of the trading hall, and after I placed them all, he was willing to trade now. I'm glad we're back on good terms. Sort of. He had aqua affinity, and I actually wanted that trade, so in order to lock in that trade and not have him switch trades, I traded with him once. That's why I needed the paper. The only problem is that I'm also going to need emeralds to lock in trades, and I don't have a lot of those. All I did from day 66 to 74 was set up the villagers with their trades. Eventually I was running out of villagers. I couldn't keep up with only using bread to breed them, so I started switching to carrots. Later on, I needed more emeralds too, so the first thing I did was expand my sugarcane farm so I could trade paper for emeralds. It still wasn't enough, so I went to the village to trade all my rotten flesh with the cleric I made. So for the next few days, I went to the mob spawner and farmed rotten flesh. After a few days, it still wasn't near enough emeralds I needed. I had to find another way. Then I remembered that the Fletcher villager traded sticks for emeralds, so I tried that since I had tons of trees to farm. The Fletcher trade was a great success. I had enough emeralds now to lock in the rest of the trades I needed, so for days 75 to 80, I finished up the trading hall. This was the last trade I needed. Finally, after so long, the trades were locked in. Now all I needed was to trade for the books I wanted for my tools and armor. And to do that, I needed even more emeralds. The rest of day 80 was spent destroying all the rails on the ground. Since I needed a lot of emeralds for books I needed, spent days 81 to 89 chopping down trees, turning them into sticks, and then selling them for emeralds and buying the books I needed. In the middle of day 89, I finally got all the books I needed and started turning all my tools and armor into netherite. I look even better now. I'm a real dictator now. None of that cheap diamond crap. The last thing I needed to be complete was some more XP to add the rest of the books to my tools and armor. So from days 90 to 92, I AFK'd and gained XP so that I could finally have my OP armor. From days 93 to 95, I finally began to actually finish my house and make it look even better. I even do as much to go to a swamp so I can get some vines to put on my walls. In the end, this is how my house looks. I like it. I'm not a great builder. I'm terrible with roofs, so this is the best I could come up with, and I'm proud of it. On day 96, I wanted a pet fox. I knew there were two in my village, so I went up to them and made them- <laughs> Supposedly, the baby fox is now mine, but he didn't follow me, so I left him there with his parents to chill. I then went to find two axolotls, or whatever they are called, 
then I looked up how to even get them, and it said that they are only found in caves, so I decided to put off that adventure for now. Day 97 and the baby fox still won't follow me. I looked it up and I guess I need to use a lead on him to bring him home. I don't have any so I have to craft one, which requires slime balls. So I went back to the swamp, collected some vines and even some lily pads, then I spotted a slime and finally got what I came for. It's now day 98 and I've crafted the lead, I have taken my dog outside, and now I am bringing my fox home with me. I put him outside with the dog so they can get to know each other. I then started killing some salmon because now I want a cat. The problem is, is that I was trying to tame a cat with cooked salmon and not raw salmon because I am dumb. It's now day 99, I'm currently getting the raw salmon that I need so I can finally tame the cat I want. Along the way he got lost, but I found him laying on my old bed and it was very cute. Eventually, I let him home and let him chill outside with my other pets. I then decided to farm the sugar cane one last time before day 100. I then slept in my bed like a true dictator before a massive victory. Day 100. It's finally here. I just want to say, I'm glad I took up this challenge for it was a lot of fun. I know I didn't beat the wither, which was one of my goals, but I'm still happy with what we can accomplish in these 100 days. This was easily the most time I put into recording and editing a video, and I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Really, I made a whole script for the video, and it took editing through 20 one and a half to two hour videos and cutting them up to the good parts, plus the 33 hours of game time. I put in a lot of work for this, but seriously, I'm not joking or being sarcastic, this was the most fun I had creating a video of mine ever. If you guys enjoyed or want me to continue the series, just like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Until next time, guys.